talking about this article by Chris Trapasso. And I guess he does this every week because I remember doing this like after a week or two. Um, Mm -hmm. And maybe it's something I should check every week. But he's a writer for CBS Sports, and he grades the young quarterbacks every week. He he talks about their high-caliber plays, their low-caliber plays, and he gives a summary, and then he gives a grade for the, the week, mm-hmm. and then a season-long grade. And we'll just cut to the chase here, and we'll go to Sam Howe. Um, and he said, let me see, high-caliber plays. Uh, his touchdown in the third quarter was short, but Howell made the throw against the momentum of his body with perfect placement. Uh, he talks about later in the quarter, he's about to be sacked, but he scooted back away from pressure and scampered 10 yards for the third and long, on a third and long. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he just, he, he just, he just, you know, he lists a bunch of plays. It was so a they, terrible game, but. Undeniably, he made some really good he plays. Played, he, play, he played well. And then he, he says, you know, he underthrew Terry on a ball. He missed John Dotson on one. So for the, and he for had the, the pick. For the week, he gave him a B. Okay. Mm-hmm. But what is kind of interesting, and I think that's fair. What's kind of interesting, though, is that for the season, he gives them a B minus, and you go, okay, that's not great. Um, but when you look at the other young quarterbacks that he's evaluating, uh, that's right up there with CJ Stroud. So C.J. Stroud's have undeniably a great season, right? Mm-hmm. He's no picks. No seven picks. touchdowns, no picks. Only been sacked 11 times. His completion percentage is kind of low. Yeah, it's a little bit lower. Um, But anyway, he's got Stroud as a B-. minus. He's got Howell as a B-. minus. The highest is Purdy. So Purdy's mm-hmm. in that mix. So these are first and second year quarterbacks. Yeah, young right. quarterbacks. Right. P- Purdy's got a B. Mm-hmm. Uh, Which is stunning because statistically he should be an A+. Plus no picks. When you look at... Passer rating and the QBR and some of those stats. Although we said PFF has them a lot lower. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Bryce Young. I the beholder. Bryce Young has a D plus on the season. That's the number one overall pick oh, this year. D yeah. plus is not. Kenny Pickett has a C minus. Basically, I don't the know same. if I'd give him that. Desmond Ritter has a C minus. Oh, that's Commander's opponent this weekend. Uh, Anthony Richardson has a C plus. The guys be out two months. ahead of those guys, number one, Brock Purdy, and then tied for second for the young quarterbacks, our fifth-round pick, Sam Howell. I think he has Stroud. Anthony Richardson ranked too low. I understand he's knocked out and his health is a concern. I'd have him ranked higher than a C plus, But that's just me Would personally. you have thought that after five weeks, the, the sack number is just alarming? Sure. And again, it's not all on Sam. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm going to split it down the middle. Maybe half of them are. Sure. But would you have thought after five weeks he would have only had six touchdown passes? I probably would have thought more. Yeah. I would have thought a little bit more. I too. would have thought more. Yeah, I thought I, I think I'd put him on twenty plus for mm-hmm. the year. So he's not on pace for that yet. But I think he'll I do think he'll get there. I think he'll get there. Um he plays. I mean he's staying. I mean he's sixth staying in, remarkably he's healthy. Sixth in yardage, so he's slinging it around. Completion percentage is um almost is it almost seventy percent? Uh here's what I'll say. 66. He's had, in my opinion, 68.6, so it's almost more seven. high caliber throws through five games than any quarterback we've had here since Kirk. Hmm. More high caliber throws, even more, in a, in, even more in a than five your, game period. Even more than Don't your boy. Don't bring up his name. <laughs> your boy. I'm just gonna say your boy. Let's not go down that road. Carson had a couple, but no, I like consistent. <laughs> like he's got two or three every week, kind of like wowzer throws. In yeah. my opinion. He's made some really nice throws. Yeah. But overall, the 29 sacks. The, not, the sacks are bad. The sacks are bad. 185 yards lost from sacks. That's yeah, got to I mean, be. They're, they're bad. Um, the the but, offensive line gets a shocking grade as a whole. They come out, like PFF has them 12th. 12th best? Yeah, it's crazy. And pass that's, protection. Yeah. It's crazy. I, I don't see I, that. I don't, I don't, I don't know how it. they do it. I don't get it. He had a lot of pockets. Clean pockets. He's had a few more. He's had a few more of late. I, I mean, I, I and he's think getting that, rid of the ball clicker. I think he's taken a lot of sacks where he runs into the sack, and that's not on the offensive line. Mm-hmm. I don't know um, that that's been the I didn't case hear, last couple weeks. I didn't hear the interview with Travis May yesterday mm-hmm. on Grant and Danny, um, but I think that his whole thing was he crunched the numbers on Sam Howell's sack rate going back to college. And I'd assume it's similar to what. Um, we found a couple weeks ago, like he has a tendency to either hold on to the ball or run into some sacks. Falcons only have five sacks through five games. Mm-hmm. So if if this offensive line at the end of this game has allowed four or five sacks, I think I mean, they will. They they do it every week. 
I mean, the Falcons can't find the quarterback. Who do we play? They're, just, they're the, so bad. The Bears but, had but we two talked. Sacks. We talked about that with Arizona. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it doesn't Maybe, seem to matter who we play. It doesn't they're, matter. The commanders are the get right game for any right. struggling That's pass correct. rushing unit. That, I mean, if now it, you're if on you the hold right. the ball a little bit too long, yeah. Or if a guy misses a block or two, or if, you know the running back tries to chip and misses, and they get to him, you know, they're going to get their sack numbers. They just are. I saw Sam Cosby hasn't allowed one sack. Mm-hmm. So he's been good in pass pro. He's, now he's, he's only one out of five. Yeah, that means the other guys are allowing an alarming number of sacks, at least on their side. Yeah. If he's not allowing any. Well, I put it this way. You were really high, JP, on Kenny Pickett going into the mm-hmm. season. Who would you rather have at this point, Pickett or Hal? I'd probably still lean towards Pickett. You would? Okay. He's only completing 59% of his passes. He's, yeah, he's been bad. It's different he's offenses. Bad. He's also been without Deontay Johnson, one of his top targets. Yeah. To be fair to Kenny Pickett. He had a nice Trust game-winning me, touchdown Kenny pass. Who would you rather have? I mean, it's to me, it's kind like 53-47. to 47. I guess I would take Howell, but I don't right. see that much difference between the two. Pickett did have a really nice touchdown pass game winner against the Ravens, and they're 3-2. and two. Mm-hmm. Um, it was bad all game. I know. It was that awful. That offense yeah. was pain, just I, I, painful I think the offense stinks there. The offense is really bad in Pittsburgh. How many drop passes did the Ravens receive? Six or have? seven at least. I think eight. I think, it was, I think it was eight, and then hmm. you could count ten. Like, it doesn't count as a drop if Zay Flowers falls down. Right. That's yeah, true. I but, saw in Pro Football Focus, I want to say Lamar was either number one I mean, or number two for the week. I think he was number one. I'm I think he had like a 94 Everybody QBR. in this room hmm. or that room would have caught the Rashad Bateman touchdown pass. We right. all would have caught I, it. I don't know. All of us would have caught it. Yeah. It was right on the hands, and it wasn't like a super fastball from Lamar. It, it's the easiest touchdown he'll ever possibly have in the NFL. I was so bitter. And he dropped it. I was so bitter at all those guys. <laughs> did you I, have the Ravens, or did you have Lamar? I've got or Lamar Bart. in a league. But I had the Ravens in yeah. the Moneyline Parlay. And just, oh. um, so he's going to have to play, a, you know, if you think he's right in that 18 to 20 range yeah. right now, how? I know he's higher on some of these other lists. I'm just looking at the Cody Benjamin list on CBS. They've got him at 20. And the Falcons. But he's going to have you, to play like top 15 this week. They lock you down passing wise. They, only, they yeah. only give up 190 yards per the game. The thing that blows me away still and it's very surprising is, and Dave talked about it too and just had him on, was the lack of. Um, outside targets the one game, the lack of targets for the top two receivers. Right. I, I just don't understand it. Mm-hmm. The enemy's getting other guys involved. Apparently, he doesn't share our philosophy that you I'm not target sure. your okay, but the enemy thing, or is it just what Hal's doing? Yeah, you know who knows. I don't I'm know. not sure. The enemy wants to target his best players. Yeah, why and, would and my guess is under duress, Hal is just Hal, not necessarily focusing. He's on leaning that. a lot on Logan Thomas. Yeah. Logan Thomas is getting a lot of targets. Is he the only guy open? I mean, I got to think McLaurin and Dotson have been open. I mean, more the, than... the major difference there. He's a really big target, and McLaurin and Dotson are not. They're smaller guys. Mm-hmm. So maybe he just he looked. It's like a comfort to him to see big hulking Logan Thomas instead of smaller guys that he's gonna have to fit the ball in more, more contested catches. Know, but he's not know. afraid to rip it. Oh, he's not afraid to throw it, it in there. into tight windows. Right. That's what right, I think. JB, the, I would think you would be more impressed with because I remember that's always something that you've uh, focused on. You know, like tight window throws. And that yeah, I'm impressed thing. by like his he, throws. He he stands in there and is not afraid to rip them. I mean, just to give you the stats, though, Cakes, okay, McLaurin does lead the team in targets with 31. Dotson's been targeted 30 yeah, times. Yeah, but that's not a lot. How, how many games they played? That's six a game. 25. Maybe. Yeah, six targets a game for your premier number one I'm not one saying it's good. I'm just lot. saying that the three wide receivers have all been targeted more than Logan. Now well, how Logan's many missed does, a game. Yeah, he's missed a game. Like Terry McLaurin should be Let's getting the at, board he should be getting the borderline like Jamar Chase treatment oh, I agree in the last with you. game where he's targeted more than fifteen times. Yeah. I mean not I'm not saying that for every game, but there should be outlier games where he gets 12, 14, 15 targets. And I just don't know if you're gonna see that in this offense. So the, maybe uh, teams are preparing against Sam Howell. They know he has a tendency to hold on to the ball a little bit long. They know that they can maybe get to the quarterback. So if they take away the first read and he's going through his progressions, they think they can get to the quarterback. I mean, here here's a reason why those guys aren't getting as many targets. Gibby had six targets in the last game. I mean, I mean think about this. Well, but also McLaurin, remember in, 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 in the last McLaurin. game, they were they were their defensive strategy, they really had kind of a deep shell. Yeah. 
and we're just trying to keep everything in front. And it was almost a, a challenge, which I think is part of the reason his completion percentage, particularly in that game, was really high, was they were just letting him have five, six yards at a time, five, six yards at a time. Think about this. McLaurin right now is 39th in the league in targets for receivers, and Dotson's 46. Oh, yeah. I think it's criminal. Tyler Boyd has more targets than Terry McLaurin, and he's a number three receiver. Right. Now, part of that's because Higgins is banged okay, up. Okay, Higgins, but he, it's not like he's been banged up the whole right. year. Remember somebody sent us that stat? I think it was a PFF, and I, I guess uh, my PFF, I'm locked out of the PFF. But maybe it wasn't where it said like we had the most the, the most percentage of plays our receivers were covered. Mm-hmm. Remember? Yep. It that was, was in one week. Yeah. I think it was through two weeks, something like that. I, I, was that a PFF graph? It might have been. I can't remember. But th- but that kind of goes to my theory that if those guys are blanketed, who's it easier to throw to? The big your guys. running back or to the big guy Logan Thomas? For sure. Well, if they're blanketed all the time, then there's something wrong with the system. I agree with that. I mean, those guys should not be 39 and 46 in targets. Ooh, I'm looking at my Gibby watch. He has 186 total yards through five weeks. He's going to need to up that production. I have 900 total yard bet with Mm. JP. I I think I'm going to fall short. You're behind the eight ball now. I'm definitely behind pace. I need Gibby to rip like a 75-yard reception for a touchdown this weekend. Where where do the Falcons rank defensively? Uh, I know that they're pretty high in passing yardage allowed. They only allow 190 yards per game. I'd have to look uh-huh. at the rest of their numbers. Total but, defense? And I think part what of that, their studs? What, what do you want to see? A.J. Terrell is a pretty good is a DB. top corner oh, for them. Mm-hmm. I'll give you some What numbers. about like on their line? Who are their studs? They got a big dude from the SEC. Is he but great? They don't have Brady a lot. Jarrett, I they, think, is one of their, their stalwarts on the D-line. But they only have like five sacks? Is that what you said? Five sacks on the year, As a yeah. team? Yeah. All right, yards per game. It's anemic. Mm-hmm. Total. They're ranked seventh. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. So it's yards better per- than the Bears. Now it's a lot of that has to do with them running the ball so much. True. Yeah, passing yards per game. Mm-hmm. They're ranked seventh. Mm-hmm. Rushing yards per game. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they're down a bit there. Uh, Why don't you look per play? I remember B. Rob ran for play. over 100 against them last year, right? I don't remember if you say it, that. So I think that's rushing correct. yards per game, they're right about midway. They're probably you know 15, 16, but um, overall seventh in, in both total yards and passing. Anyway, just to wrap up the segment, I, I I do think it's encouraging that there are some people out there. I have to agree with them for the most part that um, amongst young quarterbacks, that Howell is right up there. He's right up there with some of the better young quarterbacks. Pretty yeah. ahead of him, clearly, but he's in that next that next uh, batch. Last year, Commanders beat them nineteen to thirteen in that game. Brian Robinson eighteen carries for one hundred five yards. Taylor Heineke had a couple touchdown passes, but he only threw for a buck thirty eight. And didn't that come down to like a Mariota uh, uh, Mariota Mariota screw up at the end? I think so. Odds are probably good yeah. for that <laughs> having happened. Did he throw a pick, he a pick at the end like they were about to win the game? And it ended with uh, a I'd have pick. to go back and look. I, I think you're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it ended with it. They had a 10-play drive. They went 80 yards. And then on the last play, essentially second and goal from the four, mm. they're about to win the game. He tried to jam it into uh, Cordell Patterson. Yeah. And Kendall Fuller picked it off. Mm. Winner for the Commanders.